Hey guys, Sherry here from No Fuck Skin Crew. How's it going? So this is going to be a Divine Feminine reading for March the 18th until the 25th. So I'm going to be doing a Celtic Wing spread. Um, and I will be pulling three cards using my deck for each position for clarification. Um, and then I'm going to be pulling a div Divine Feminine aspect and di Divine Masculine aspect as well. To show us the interplay of energies between the two. So I'm using John Holland's Psychic Tarot for the main cards and mine for the clarifiers. And then I may use the Osho Zen Tarot for additional messages. I'll also be pulling two cards from Call It Baron Reed for a message from the universe as well. Alright, so beginning with your present position. The Six of Pentacles, material and spiritual prosperity. So you feel balanced in the material world as well as spiritually. Um, you feel very successful and open to giving and re receiving. It also talks about abundance coming towards you. So you are looking towards the future. You're looking towards the sun. And you're feeling hopeful and accomplished and grounded. Full card. Queen of Pentacles. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. I'm laughing because the Divine Masculine reading was very similar to this. Um, it's, you know, taking uh, the Masculine taking that leap of faith new beginning towards the Divine Feminine in the 3D, which is his true twin flame. Uh, so that's kind of the message that I was, definitely the message that I was getting from the Divine Masculine. But, um, okay, so the Fool card, uh, brand new beginning, beginning of the Fool's journey, taking a leap of faith, um, moving towards your, your destiny. Um, but not having a fixed de destination. It is uh, looking at the world through a child's eyes, being excited and, you know, the feeling of adventure surging through you. And so, yeah, it's zero point. No expectations, no attachments to the outcome. And so it's a male energy that I'm getting here. It isn't the John Holland fool, uh, card which depicts a woman it's a male energy and then we have a male energy here so you know I think that's just the masculine's energy coming in because he actually got the six of pentacles in his reading as well and that's about being open and giving and receiving and having a connection in the 3D, it's like that exchange, sharing of lives in the 3D. So I'm, I'm getting that same mes message very strongly here. A movement towards the f uh, feminine in the 3D. So this is the Queen of Pentacles, she represents the material world. That which you can taste, touch, see and, and you know, experience. Um, so, she represents um, financial independence. She's, you know, um, she's grounded. Um, she doesn't have to rely on anybody to help her. She's got her own shit together. So that is such a beautiful energy to be coming in with. Um, you are grounded in your knowing. Um, and you are, you know, uh, like a flower sending out your seeds into the wind and allowing your intentions, uh, I mean, those intentions to fly freely and they will come back to you. So, yeah, I'm getting a strong message here of this new beginning, um, the masculine energy coming towards you in the 3D. And um, it's like he wants to share his life with you. And 
Then we got the 1111 calling card. Um, this is this card represents um, the 1111 twin flame connection, and the masculine got this as well. But he got it as a foundation with the uh, four of wands, and then he got the four of wands in his present position, which is the 1111 calling card too as well. So that that's incredible. Very similar message. Um, for the foundation, intuition, beautiful. Wow, girls, this is awesome. Namaste. I really do feel like this. You know, the internet is the way that our souls are able to interact with each other. Um, you know, there is no 3D... Um, world in the internet you can't you know I can't feel you or taste you or touch you <laughs> not like I'd want to taste you but <laughs> um, yeah it's a spiritual um, grouping of souls uh, and so I kind of feel like this high priestess you know when I go within I can feel this light um, surrounding me you know the law of attraction um, I really feel like I'm being surrounded by true life angels so yeah th thank you guys uh, so much gratitude I, I love you guys so much thank you for your support and um, yeah so the foundation of the reading here is us truly connected in you know in tune with our inner knowing um, highly intuitive and psychic um, but this is our grounding energy this is the foundation our truth, our knowing. Wow. Temperance card. The Knight of Swords and the Nine of Swords. Uh, temperance card is integration. The masculine got this in his reading and I, I read it, so if you want to check that out. It is a coming together of dualities. It is what I... Um, this card represents the soul union, you know, the zipping of the DNA, um, uh, the S sign in the yin and yang, she represents zero point where the soul exists. This, I mean, this is off topic, but um, she's represented as a five and she should actually be represented as a nine. Uh, if you know anything about vortex based math, number nine represents the soul. So, you know, um, she's holding this union, this balance, this harmony um, within her, as well as her external environment. This talks about a balance between the spiritual and the physical, um, you know, overall balance and how you deal with situations. Uh, and it also talks about pa patience, you know, planting that seed nurturing it, loving it, and allowing it to grow. Uh, and being at peace, stillness, allowance. And then we got the Knight of Swords. This is uh, communication. He is a champion. I've been seeing him a lot lately. And um, he comes in very suddenly. He, he changes things. He speaks his truth. He, you know, um, fire, not fires things up, but... Um, gets things changing and rolling. Um, he's a doer, and then he's gone. But the main thing is he's a champion. He's a rebel without a cause. He, um, he speaks his truth. He holds this, the sword of truth, and it's a masculine energy. And then we have the nine of swords, uh, another sword. So it's almost like this is the same person. And Nine of Swords is about staying up all night, being consumed with thought, imprisoning your mind. Uh, you know, you're consumed with fear, anxiety, stress, uh, and guilt. So there's a sense of him, you know, being locked in this prison of the mind. And it's because he wants to communicate or move forward uh, with his truth. And here you stand in balance, peaceful, 
tranquil. Okay, so recent past. Wow, the sun, light. This is the most positive card in the Major Arcana. It is all good feels. Um, blessings being showered down on you. You've worked hard and have accomplished much and Spirit is um, giving back to you. This represents a, a new beginning. Uh, in the Rider Weight deck, it depicts a child naked on a white horse of purity. And there's, it's a movement forward, a brand new beginning. The child represents innocence. The horse is purity. And um, it's your turn to be in the sun, in the light. So spirit is recognizing you. And then, like, this is coming in in the recent past position. So it's an illumination. Oh, nice. An illumination. Whoa. Oh boy. Okay. Um, all right. So beautiful card. Keep that in mind. This is a, the main energy of this position is the, the sun accomplishment, light, being in the light, illumination, awakening, awareness. Then we have the high priest. Every time we see him, I see this as him coming in offering reassurance, saying, I'm always with you. Um, you know, we are divinely guided also. So it's almost like, you know, you're being surrounded by this masculine energy. Uh, the sun is masculine. And here we have him, you know, his crown chakra is activated, third eye activated. And he's really in tune and connected to his spirituality, his inner knowing, his light within and here he's shining brightly on you. Um, and then, you know, we have the High Priestess, which is also intuitive. Three, that 5D connection, offering each other um, reassurance. And I forgot to mention, so let me just put this down for a moment. Actually, this goes up here. Oh my god, I'm so OCD. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, you know, there's a sense that he's been through something quite difficult, obviously. This is the dark night of the soul. Um, but the nine represents an ending, and he got so many nines in his reading. Or was that the twin flame reading? Oh, God, I'm getting, I'm getting them all mixed up. Sorry. Okay, so, um, yeah, but, I mean, it represents an ending to this. It's a release. It's coming out of that prison uh, and standing in your truth. And you are right beside him, offering this balance and also saying, I'm with you here always in the 5D. Even though I'm not with you in the 3D, I'm here with you always. We all have a twin flame. And it all depends on your ascension level. You know, the work that you've done um, will determine whether or not you get to meet him in this life or another. Okay, so going back to this, um, so he's offering reassurance, and why is he doing that? Because of these two cards here. Um, so recently, a major tower has come down, and I say major because of this three of swords here. So back to the tower. This is a sudden change, whoa, um, just like that. I didn't know that car was gonna jump out of my hand like that. Thank you, Divine Masculine point taken. So yeah, um, the tower came down. There was a complete, um, I, you know, identity change or um, a release, a, a death and a rebirth. Um, and this has to do with the five, uh, 3D world, uh, the material world. So when things are built on a faulty foundation, um, it was meant to crumble. So if you had any attachments to things in the 3D, uh, you know, ego-driven attachments, all of those things have come down or are about to come down. And, but it's a rebirth 
from the destruction comes a new beginning and your truth. And then we have the Three of Swords. Broken heart. Um, feeling like your world is falling apart. No control over the outcome. The tower is sudden. And, you know, it caused a lot of pain. And, um, but there's a sense that you're releasing that. You've moved away. You've, you're healing your heart because it's in the past. And the major energy is the sun. This comes in after um, the, well, the moon. But before that is a star card. And the star card is... It comes in after a very difficult period of time and it offers you hope and optimism for the future and it's a time of healing. So this is two cards beyond that. So this is like you healing your heart, really seeing that light from within and shining your light bright for all to see. And it's a female here, a feminine. So yeah, the Divine Masculine is, was with you during this tower. And, you know, helping you through that difficult time, just like you did with him in spirit. 5D connection. Okay. Well, this card stuck to my elbow. Ah, nice. <laughs> I just wanted to see what the urgency was about here. Um, so the Page of Pentacles. Uh, this is a child perspective of the world, stepping from the darkness into the light, into the beautiful rainbow colors. Oh, so beautiful. Um, and I'm feeling it came with this card, which is the same kind of essence. It is the discovery of the child within the light, your purity, your innocence. Uh, rediscovering those qualities about yourself. So if I put that here and read it to you. Okay. Actually, I'll hold it in my hand. Um, I'm so sorry. I don't want to pause the tape. Um, just keep it live. Not live, but uncut. So, page uh, 78. When we are truly in a spirit of adventure, we are moving just like a child, full of trust, out of the darkness of the forest, into the rainbow of light, out of goblin forest. Um, we go step by step, drawn by our sense of wonder into the unknown. Adventure really has nothing to do with the plans and maps and programs and organizations. The page of rainbows represents a quality that can come to us anywhere, at home or in the office, in the wilderness or in the city, in a creative project or in our relationships with others. Whenever we move into the new and unknown with the trusting spirit of a child, Innocent and open and vulnerable, even the smallest things of life can become the greatest adventures. So, yeah, it's that beautiful childlike, you know, child riding a horse naked in the sun. But this is more of a, a slow, steady step, but it's movement forward. Uh, this is also a page which represents communication in the 3D. But I'm just seeing it as a rebirth from this tower. This child emerged from the dust and into her light, her soul. Okay. Um, um, on to, uh, sorry guys, it's just, I'm, I'm so, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I almost want to cry. Stop it. Okay. Um, the outcome position that you would like to have and likely to get if you stay on this path. Awesome. Truth, judgment, 
um, it is that grand awakening, um, seeing your life the way it truly is, um, that it is just a movie that was played on this tiny screen projector, you know, a movie that was played in your mind. You created the story, the, the people, um, you know, the plot. So, you know, it's a, an awakening to who you are. In truth, you are this child, innocent and free. And you are this beautiful light, star in the sky. So this card also talks about significant changes going on and a decision needs to be made. Uh, and you're at being asked to carefully weigh uh, your decision because it will have far-reaching consequences um, but it represents truth knowing your truth and you know it's a, a new beginning as well it's the Phoenix rising so let me get three cards for that seven of Pentacles Ace of Cups and Knight of Cups. That's interesting. Uh, the masculine got this card as well. Um, so the Seven of Pentacles is the waiting um, patiently for your return, for the ships to come in. Um, it is the pregnant pause, gestation. Uh, you've done the hard work and now you're waiting for the tide to turn for that wind of change. Um, but this card says that that return will come. Um, you must be patient. <laughs> I, know, I hate saying that to you guys. I'm sorry, but this freaking card is following us everywhere. Okay, it cannot show up. But it means, you know, please have patience and uh, the love is coming. You got the Ace of Cups. You are open vessel, your channel for love. And guess what? Knock, knock, knock. The Knight of Cups. All right? It's that love. It's coming towards you. And it has to do with your truth. Um, being grounded, being balanced. Um, being patient, uh, but you are being represented as, you know, that still in you knowing. Um, open channel. Uh, so, yeah, just have patience, guys. Anyway, the uh, knight in shining armor, that's the masculine... Um, offering his love to you in a poetic gestures, you know, um, it could be engagement or it's a, a new start, but it has to do with longing. Um, it isn't the actual relationship, you know, um, spiritual union kind of thing. It's a beginning of, it is a movement forward towards. So, you know, um, there's that sense that you're here in your knowing, holding that sort of truth. Um, karma's coming back to you in a good way. Judgment is about karma. Uh, but you're patiently waiting. And um, the Ace of Cups only shows up when you are truly have healed your heart and you're um, open to receiving love. And guess what? Like I said, knock, knock, knock. Uh, karma comes knocking on your door and it's love. The twin flame. I just love how you know that there's that freedom, that movement towards the feminine in the three D. You're in your knowing, and then and he's knocking on that at that door. It's like he gets up, he 
you know, he's sitting there thinking, and then he has an aha, and he's like, you know what? Screw this shit. And then he stands up, he walks out this 5D door, emerges from the fire as a child. And currently he is like, you know, on this mission of freedom, um, gaining momentum in the 3D world, you know, gaining um, mass, if you want to call it that, in the 3D world. And then here he's love. And the feminine is just like, Namaste. Yeah. Totally tapped in. At peace. Grounded. In the light. Peaceful. Okay, for your crossroads position. <laughs> oh my god. Too perfect. Spiritual union. So near future position. Um, yeah, it's right at the center of the reading for the Celtic cross. Um, it, this represents the twins coming together, love overflowing. Um, they have a connection at the heart through the third eye and the crown, and there's a beautiful exchange of energy flowing through them. And uh, so it's seeing your twin in another seeing the light in the other and seeing it as yourself recognizing yourself in the other but it is spiritual union the moon four of swords and seven of swords this card keeps showing up it's bizarre Okay, so this, there's a similar energy in the Divine Masculine's reading as well. There's a sense that there's something in his external environment that is causing him to feel this way. Either he's going to be stabbed in the back, um, someone's going to betray him, but he's worried about an energy. Um, so... You know, it's a negative energy, so he's trying to find a release, a way out. Uh, so this is the moon card. This is the, dark, um, you know, facing your shadow aspect, facing this. You know, it's this that is causing this. But ultimately, you know, he's, he's... Spiritually, he's moving forward as the fool. Um, so, this, yeah, it's facing your shadow aspect. It is diving deep beneath the layers to the subconscious mind and finding the truth there. Uh, the moon also represents the feminine energy. The sun is the masculine, feminine is moon. Um, it also represents psychic, intuitive energy, um, but it's seen below. And it, yeah, it also talks about facing your fears head on in, in order to move through this veil. So. You know, it's almost like the masculine is standing at the edge of this veil and just can't quite see through to the other side. You know, can't quite see that union fully. And then uh, here we have another masculine energy, four swords, and it is uh, retreat, a pause. It is uh, meditation, rejuvenation. It is quieting the mind releasing these negative thoughts this veil and coming you know having a clear mind mental control and healing the heart 
Um, and it also talks about, you know, doing that in order to lay a foundation in the 3D. You know, it's a, a decision to move forward. But it's clarity of thought. And it's almost like he's looking now at this connection. Wanting to manifest that into his reality. So, yeah, I mean, although... This is the Divine Feminine reading. Um, this really has a very strong masculine pull to it. And why not? Because he showed up right here at the beginning. All right, so... Let's still see the cards, okay. Uh, okay, that was Crossroads. So now we're doing resisting. What are you resisting? Shadow, the moon again. Hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe if this is a feminine energy, uh, this pause... Um, this pause for you know, the male to heal himself and face his shadow aspect is causing more shadow uh, work to be done in the feminine as well. Um, yeah, so here you can clearly see, you know, the two aspects being confronted, the dark and the light. So it's like, you know, this energy is turned away from their shadow self. Whereas here, um, there's a sense that um, that energy turns around and faces itself. But this is in a resisting position. So you're resisting facing your shadow self, or he is resisting facing your shadow self. But I don't know, he's in this four sword state, right? So he's peace, at peace. Well, I don't know, let's pull some more cards here. Oh, wow. Death card. Bam. Divine Masculine Twin Flame. And the King of Wands. Interesting combination here. Okay, so. The moon is, you know, can represent the dark night of the soul. It is facing your fears and walking through that veil. It is anything you've pushed down deep below the surface and ignored. Then the death card is transformation, metamorphosis. It is the butterfly emerging from the chrysalis. It is um, shedding your old identity completely, cutting away the negative, the, uh, the old idea, ideas, the old beliefs, the old systems of control, um, and emerging from that is this divine masculine twin flame um, from the fire, the king of wands. So I don't understand why this is, is being represented as in the resisting position. Because these are, this is a great combination <laughs> of cards. It's like, you know, facing your shadow aspect walking through that veil, like cutting the veil away, being reborn as the divine masculine twin flame. And there's, you know, there's this fire energy of the king of wands. Uh, he's in his power. So resisting. Okay, so I'm going to put this down and I'm going to pull a card from the Osho for additional messages. The, um, yeah, the King of Wands showed up a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was being represented as the center of the sun for the Divine Masculine, stepping into his power. Okay. Oh, this is not the Osho, sorry. I guess Spirit wanted me to shuffle, okay. So, what do you mean by the moon, the death card? Divine Masculine and King of Wands. This one. 
magician, existence. Huh, okay, so I'll read that to you. And the bottom caught my eye. Whoa, the tower card, again, thunderbolt. So it's a related energy I'm feeling. So yeah, like this, that's a major, major change. Sudden comes in fast, but remember it's coming in from the past position over here. So from that death, that rebirth, that transformation, he came into his own knowing. Uh, his, you know, seeing how he is connected to the universe. He is the universe. This naked figure sits on a lotus leaf of perfection, gazing at the beauty of the night sky. She knows that home is not a physical place in the world, in the outside world, but an inner quality of relaxation and acceptance. The stars, the rocks, the trees, the flowers, fish and birds are all our brothers and sisters in this dance of life. We human beings tend to forget this as we pursue our own private agenda and believe we must fight to get what we need. But ultimately, our sense of separateness is just an illusion manufactured by the narrow preoccupi preoccupi the preoccupation of the mind. Now is the time to look at whether you are allowing yourself to receive the extraordinary gift of feeling at home, wherever you are. If you are, be sure to take time to savor it so it can deepen and remain with you. If, on the other hand, you've been feeling like the world is out to get you, it is time to take a break. Go outside tonight and look at the stars. Wow, there's that that look at the stars message again. That was that came in very strong uh, in the Twin Flame reading. Your connection to the universe. Um, still doesn't answer my question as to why uh, you're resisting the moon and all of this. So let's just carry on and see what else happens. All right, so your internal environment. Seven of Swords, again, Deception and Envy. So that's this card right here. So you feel like you're being deceived. Uh, you feel like you're not being told the entire truth that you're being lied to. Somebody sneaking around behind your back and hurting you. You have something to lose. Uh, and the, this is sword, so it's thoughts. Negative energy, negative thoughts. All right, so Eight of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, and the Devil. All right, Eight of Wands. Uh, this is communication by air. Um, it also represents Cupid's arrows. Uh, love coming towards you very fast uh, and it also represents reaching for the stars uh, for your highest dreams your highest goals you know um, seeing your true purpose your true calling and throwing out your seeds of intention and allowing those to come back to you and this is the energy of it coming back to you so something good is coming your way. This Knight of Pentacles is my favorite knight. He can be trusted. He's loyal. Um, he gets to where he's going. He's walking a tight wire rope here, so every foot, every step is measured, uh, but he will arrive. And when this card shows up, it means that he's almost ready to take that last step off onto ground. Uh, then we have the uh, devil card and this is in reference to material pleasures having too much emphasis placed on it, on their value and so it also could represent um, addictions or um, codependent relationships but it, it's a chain that is stopping this final um, you know, step onto ground. It is, he, um, 
this male energy is unable to move forward because of the devil. And this is also male energy here as well. So, you know, to interpret it in terms of the feminine, you know, you're questioning whether or not this is happening. Um, whether or not there's any movement at all, because it's very slow. Um, but in reality, there is movement. It's just slow because um, there's this obstacle that needs to be released to fully be able to come forward. But both of these cards rep represent a forward movement. Um, now this card, the Seven of Swords, could also represent masculine, his energy, questioning whether or not he can trust the Divine Feminine, whether or not, you know, you might take advantage of his trust in some way and deceive him but I'm not getting that at all I'm getting a feeling that you're questioning him you're kind of questioning whether or not he's going to arrive and is he you know is this all a lie illusion or you know is this ever going to happen WTF But again, when this card shows, it means that, yes, it, it is happening. It's just a very long, slow process. This, this card, it, I mean, the, the, the um, Twin Flame uh, journey is about uh, awakening and consciousness, coming together and allowing each other to grow and come into these higher states of consciousness. And sadly, it is a painful process. Only through these stages of rebro uh, rebirth over and over and over again, can we truly awaken to who we are? Our true authentic self is not someone who needs and wants for union. Um, if that is the case, then that you're pushing it further away by wanting. This is the state to be in, peaceful, resting, at peace, balanced. Because you're always connected on a soul level, no matter what. Okay, so, um, your external environment, nice, Ace of Pentacles, brand new beginning in the 3D world, so it's an external environment, so there's this reminder that the seed has been planted, uh, there's a grounded energy, and there's a coming together to nurture and grow it, love it, that's what temperance talks about, patience while um, the seed grows and gestates and becomes a 3D manifestation. So there's a definite grounded energy here coming from the external. Three of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, and Ace of Wands. Holy cow. So 10 reduces to 1. So there's an 11 and then a, so 1, 1, 1. And then there's a Three of Pentacles. Uh, so the Pentacles is Earth, uh, grounded energy, things in the 3D physical world. Uh, cups is emotions. It, the Ten of Cups refers to emotional abundance. It is the happy ending. The masculine got this in his foundation. And uh, so it is, this energy is coming from him because uh, it's an external environment. So I'm, I'm feeling you know, he wants this brand new beginning. He also got this uh, in his, uh, I think it was foundation as well. I don't know, but it was pretty mirac miraculous how that we've got some mirroring here. So this external environment is definitely coming in from him. Um, so this is that happily ever after. It's peace, harmony, and it all has to do with love. That blissful state. Okay, the Three of Pentacles is that initial grounding and then a return. So there's a progress here from it going from a seed uh, to actually starting to see the fruits of, of your labor. The, you know, the, the, the seed is sprouting. There's an initial return um, and there's hope for more. So it's a pat on the back, good work. 
grounded energy. See it is growing. Then we got the Ace of Wands, and this is the Go Light. It is a brand new beginning in life. It is a movement forward. It's an explosion, inspiration, um, and it has to do with your highest dreams, reaching for the stars. So yeah, it's the shot out of the gate, go time. So wow, I mean, you know, the masculine is really working towards grounding this loving energy and um, looking towards the future and seeing this happy ending, which is motivating him to um, keep working on it. Brand new beginnings of, you know, beginning in the 3D world as well as this spiritual um, connection as well. Oh my goodness. Ah! That freaking tower card. Okay, I'm just going to leave that for a moment and finish this off. Um, so for um, the outcome, and that represents these three cards here, triumphant, or sorry, victory and success. Awesome. Six of Wands. Um, once again, you're being recognized for all of the hard work that you've been doing. Um, you've achieved much. People are proud of you. You're standing in the light. Um, it is harvest. It's return. The wait is over. And, yeah, it's illumination as well. It's the soul growth, achievement, justice. Queen of Cups. I haven't seen her for a while. And the Ace of Swords. Uh, so this is an 11. And an Ace is 1. There's that 111 again. Um, so this is balance. Um, it's cause and effect. It's karma. Uh, and it means that good karma is coming towards you. Uh, so she also represents um, truth. Then the Queen of Cups, this is um, the feminine as a loving, generous, open, receptive um, woman who is free of emotional attachment. She can give her love freely. And she's also psychically intuitive. Um, then we have the Ace of Swords. And that keeps coming up as a major energy both in the twin flame and the divine masculine there's a sense of like you know that sword coming down the truth being offered or spoken or it's like a finality bam and you know and i Getting that it has to do with speaking your truth or knowing your truth. You are being represented so strongly right now. The Queen of Cups, open heart chakra, activated, open receptacle to love. Um, feeling illuminated, being victorious, and um, people are proud of you and cheering you on. And then we have the Justice card and the Ace of Swords, it's truth unwavering and deep knowing of your truth okay so for the summary outcome nine of wands spiritual growth uh, the divine feminine got this as an outcome in the twin flame reading so um, again there's that sense don't give up Hang in there. And so right above that is the Two of Cups. This is what you are holding up now that you see what it for what it is. Is it really that heavy? Spiritual strength, spiritual union. If it's true, it should weigh nothing at all. So three cards. The sun, whoa, twin flame, lover's card, and six of swords. Okay, so um, the sun card, again, to, uh, masculine qualities. It is a brand new beginning, 
uh, a rebirth into the sun, into the light, that child moving towards the light. Um, best major arcana. The uh, lover's card is that twin flame connection, unconditional love, a soul connection, but it is yearning for, it is longing for, it is an actual union as of yet, and that's what's causing this exhaustion. The nine of wands is wanting to give up, um, you know, feeling exhausted too much on your shoulders, but really uh, he is a Buddha, so he his strength is unwavering, it's his spiritual knowing is at the core of his soul, and, it, and uh, there's a sense of being, you know, unwavering. Um, but it, there's this longing energy to it. And then we have the Six of Swords, and that's the decision to finally move away from the darkness and move into the light. Um, uh, but this is a good card. It's moving on. And uh, the Feminine got it as a final outcome for the Twin Flame and the Masculine. I'm trying to remember where he got it, but... I know it was a pretty important card in the reading, so um, there's that decision to finally walk away from negativity, negative people, um, give it that final push, and that opens that gate, that portal to true love. So, yeah, there's a sense that you're resisting cutting away something, the tower, the moon, you know, you're, you're resisting it, and it is that which is stopping this from coming in. Now, now this card, these cards make sense to me. But then again, you know, there's still this, um, you know, this, um, uh, silent present state here you can see there's like a figure witnessing the um the tower falling and then here this woman is looking out and witnessing her connection to um you know the universe so it's an in out kind of feeling to it So yeah, the don't resist the change. The tower must come down. Final outcome for a pentacle. Uh, firm foundation. So this, you know, could represent an energy of being closed off, holding on to material possessions, um, but it can also represent laying a firm foundation in the 3D world. The Nine of Wands, the Five of Pentacles, and the Three of Wands. That's an interesting turn of events. So, Nine of Wands, same card um, as this one, except for this one has more of a meaning of uh, being a wounded warrior, fighting battles. Um, standing your ground but you have a lot of scars and wounds but you you're still have that strength to push one final time and ultimately achieve here the you know the four of pentacles it's masculine energy again there's a sense of defense you know he's ready to defend in the 3D, and then here we got that defense kind of energy again. Then we have the Five of Pentacles, and again there's that sense of um, um, fighting or arguing. The the five is feeling left out in the cold, or you know you're asking for help, no one's giving it to you, um, or there's a sense of shooting yourself in the foot in order to be released from a situation. But there's a loss. 
um, and it's because they were holding on too tight to material things. This is four of pentacles, this is the five of pentacles. So it, when you hold on too tightly to your material possessions, then that's when the tower comes in. That's when you feel a sense of loss. So then we got the three of wands. So this card comes um, after a decision that was made that had to do with expansiveness of the mind. It's, it has to do with your higher purpose. Um, seeing your, uh, these visions and moving forward with those visions and you know really trying to make them a reality but it has to do with um, that divine spark within you know um, then uh, the, but the three of wands talks about that harvest coming back you know um, there's a sense of waiting for the ships to return but but seeing beginning to see the fruits of your labor so um, but yeah it's has to do more with um, finding that light within your true higher calling. So I'm getting a sense that, you know, um, where is it? The tower, you know, the devil here still needs to be released. It's stopping that final step off the tight wire rope so in order to release himself um, there's a sense that there will be a material loss in the 3d but ultimately it's not a big deal because he's just looking pretty happy about it but it's a release in order to stop from feeling this energy like this I'm so tired I'm exhausted I can't fight another battle I'm too tired so shoots himself in the foot and he's like woohoo you know he's grounded he's strong he can continue fighting if he has to but there's a sense of making a decision to release himself okay so I'm going to pause it, rearrange the cards, and, uh, and then I'm going to pull the masculine and feminine energies. Um, but I'm just going to look at the bottom of the deck first to see the overall message. Two of Wands, the waiting game. So in the John Holland deck, he has a tendency to merge two numbers together. So this is the two and the three. Uh, this is making a decision for, uh, you know, based on something that wasn't fear driven it was based on your highest expectations um, and let me read it to you so I'm trying to explain it with my ADHD self here okay number two okay this card indicates that you've worked hard to set things in motion in certain areas of your life and you're now waiting for the results to come to fruition. The number two is all about choices and decisions. In the past, you may have been afraid of making decisions or choices, but now you're no longer held prisoner by this fear or the constraint of old. Of old beliefs, I'm oh, sorry, just of old beliefs. Expect the best and be open to the limitless power of your intuition, which is presently very strong trust and use it to assist you achievement and success are assured but once obtained don't let it change you remember who you are the effort that it took to get to this point and the gratitude you need to show to the other people who helped you stay on your spiritual path for it will continue to guide you in the journey of your soul so uh, in the right away deck it more represents you know making a decision but seeing all the possibility it is an opening of the mind it is expansiveness in my deck I represent a door being open and when you look out that door you see the universe which is yourself looking back at you it's just seeing the grand picture um, but here it represents a waiting whereas the, for me the three of the wands is the one that the, the, the car that represents waiting for the ships to come in so yeah um, the overall energy is the waiting game I'm sorry girls Oh, don't hate the messenger, please. 
All right, so yeah, I'll pause it there. I'll rearrange the cards and then we'll pull the masculine and feminine aspects. All righty, we're back. So I'm going to be using the Osho Zen Tarot, uh, four cards for the feminine, four for the masculine. And I may end up reading these to you. So external environment for the feminine, three of swords. Um, that came in the past position. It's external environment. So this may be coming from the masculine energy. So there's a sense that he's made of ice, cold, not allowing love in. But then, you know, and it's because men are being conditioned. Let me read it to you. There's a sense that he's opening up, like really allowing those emotions to flow. In our society, men in particular have been taught not to cry, to put a brave face on things when they can't, or sorry, when they get hurt and not show that they are in pain. But women can fall into the tr this trap as well. And all of us at one time or another might feel that the only way to su survive is to close off our feelings and emotions so we can't be hurt again. If our pain is so particularly deep we might even try to hide it from ourselves. This can make us frozen, rigid, because deep down we know that one small break in the ice will free the hurt to start circulating through us again. The rainbow colored tears on this person's face hold the key to breaking out of this isolation. The tears, and only the tears, have the power to melt the ice. It's okay to cry, and there is no reason to feel ashamed of your tears. Crying helps us to let go of the pain, allows us to be gentle with ourselves, and finally help us to heal. So it's a masculine energy, external environment, really healing himself. Okay, for um, the masculine external conditioning, uh, the devil card, realizing you are the lion amongst the sheep. This card recalls an old Zen story about a lion who was brought up by sheep and who thought he was a sheep until an old lion captured him and took him to a pond where he showed him his reflection. Many of us are like the lion. The image we have of ourselves comes not from our own direct experience, but from the opinions of others. A personality imposed from the outside replaces the individuality that have grown from within. We become just another sheep in the herd, unable to move freely, unconscious of our own true identity. It's time to take a look at your own reflection in the pond and make it Make a move to break out of whatever you're, you have been conditioned by others to believe about yourself. Dance, run, jog, do gibberish, whatever is needed to wake up the sleeping lion within. So it is an external environment. So it's like, you know, you are helping him to see that lion within. Or it just could mean that he is realizing um, how his external environment is holding him back. That devil energy, where is it? I know I saw her ugly face. There it is. So remember, there's that deception energy, not knowing you know what the truth is. Uh, but there's a movement forward but in an inability to step off the tight wire rope onto land because of this devil. So it's causing the feminine to feel like she's being deceived, you know, but there is movement forward. 
Um, so yeah, it's his external environment, so there's this release, awakening. Okay, so for the feminine internal guidance, Masculine got this on his side for a hope and fear. So it's being guided um, by your internal... Um, let me read it. I'm having a hard time talking today. So, 142... Alrighty. The angelic figure with rainbow colored wings on this card represents the guide that each of us carries within. Like the second figure in the background, we may sometimes be a re little reluctant to trust the guide within. Uh, we are accustomed to taking cues from the outside world rather than from within. The truth of our own deepest being is trying to show you where to go right now. And when this card appears, it means you must trust the inner guidance you are being given. It speaks in whispers, and sometimes we can hesitate, not knowing if we understood rightly. But the indications are clear. In following the inner guide, you will feel more whole, more integrated, as if you are moving outward from the very center of your being. If you go with it, this beam of light will carry you exactly where you need to go. So emphasis on using your internal guide and growing these wings and flying, um, being free to go where your heart desires. Okay, so the masculine internal, four swords, po postponement, um, feeling unable to move forward. So this came up um, I'm not seeing it. I'm pretty sure, I thought for sure that this card was here it is. okay, four swords. Uh, so this was the crossroads energy. It's you know uh, feeling like you're being deceived. And so it's causing a delay. And here, um, this card kind of represents the in, you know, wanting to experience like, all colors of life, but not quite being able to do that. You know, the colors on the shirt is just starting to be shown, but there's a sense that of uh, being stuck, inability to really experience life fully. So remember that this is meditation. It is um, quieting the mind. So internally, this is how he's feeling right now. He's in a meditative state, um, trying to heal his heart and make decisions about the future. All right, so your hopes and fears. Rebirth, Ten of Swords. I'm going to read this to you as well because it's, similar to this card there's different stages of evolution and you know different stages of consciousness and awakening uh, so I think there's seven of them but this card represents three and 36. This card depicts the evolution of consciousness as it is described by Frederick Nietzsche in his book, Thus Spake Zarathustra. I don't know. He speaks of three levels of camel, lion, and child. The camel is sleepy, dull, and self-satisfied. He lives in delusion, thinking he's a mountain peak, but really he is so concerned with others' opinions that he hardly has any energy of his own. Emerging from the camel is a lion, when we realize we've been missing life, we start saying no to the demands of others. We move out of the crowd, alone and proud and roaring our truth. 
but this is not the end. Finally, the child emerges, neither acquiescent nor rebellious, but innocent and spontaneous and true to his own being. Whatever the space you're in right now, sleepy and depressed or roaring and rebellious, be aware that it will e evolve into something new if you allow it. It is a time of growth and change. So yeah, it's, you know, one step up from realizing that you are the lion amongst the sheep and then that child this is rebirth it is um, it's a, a spiritual awakening and a return to innocence just like this card here you know so from this end this death came the child Oops. I'm just going to put that there. Uh, so, hope, yes. Um, also, the Ten of Swords, you know, it talks about a completion that you are, um, you've been stabbed in the back so many times that you just can't go on, you know, you're out for the count. So, yeah, it's a rebirth from this darkness. Um, the next card would be the Ace of Swords. Brand new beginning, clarity of thought. So you want, you're hoping for this rebirth, this end of this process. Okay, so for the masculine, hope and fear. Nine of Swords. So this showed up um, as an external environment for the f feminine side on the in the divine masculine reading. I think um, I know it was the masculine energy, anyways. So the nine of swords is one less card than uh, the ten, which I hope right here. So yeah, it's this is a completion. This is nearing that completion. Um, this is being unable to, to sleep, having nightmares, um, night terrors, uh, consumed with thought, piercing thoughts, guilt, shame, regret, um, fear. And so it's imprisoning your mind. So it's a nine, so it's nearing the completion of this state. So there's like... Presently, he feels like this, unable to completely move into the colors, into the light. Um, but, you know, there's still that sense of coming into your knowing that you are the lion. And so there's that sense of escape or hope. And then the, the Nine of Swords is nearing that. And ultimately he will rise, you know, as that child. Because um, it's reflective in his reading. You know, he's coming in as the Fool card. Which is that childlike innocence, that brand new beginning, that adventure. Alright, so for uh, the Feminine's final outcome. Oh chain reaction death card stop it okay uh, your final outcome ace of pentacles maturity flowering one fifty eight that is such a beautiful ending it's um Ace of Pentacles is that brand new beginning in the 3D world. So that came in right here as an external energy. Alright, so this figure stands alone, silent and yet alert. The inner being is filled with flowers um, that carry the quality of springtime and regeneration wherever he goes. The inner flowering and the wholeness that he feels offered the possibility of unlimited movement 
He can move in any direction, within and without. It makes no difference. As his joy and maturity cannot be diminished by externals, he has come to a time of centeredness and expansiveness. The white glow around the figure is his pro protection and his light. All of life's experiences have brought him to this time of per perfection. Um, when you draw this card, know that this moment carries a gift for hard work well done. Your base is solid now, and success and good fortune are yours, for they are the outcome of what has already been experienced within. Beautiful. You know, there's this ice, um, and then healing, and a rebirth to this flowering state. How beautiful. And then, uh, okay, so let's pull the final outcome. The death card again. Transformation. That's beautiful. Okay, gonna read that one. Sorry, I'm reading so many of them, but I'm, they're just, they're speaking to me. Definitely, you know, a story or a timeline here. All right, so um, the central figure in this card sits atop a vast flower of the void and holds a symbol of transformation. Very re reflective energy here. Um, the sword that cuts through illusion, the snake that rejuvenates itself by shedding its skin, the broken chain of limitation and the yin and the yang symbol of transcending dualities. One of its hands rests on its lap, open and receptive. The other reaches down to touch the mouth of the sleeping face, symbolizing the silence that comes when we are at rest. This is the time for a deep let go. Allow any pain, sorrow, or difficulty just to be there, accepting its facity, facicity or something like that. Um, it is very much like the experience of Gautam Buddha when, after years of seeking, he finally gave up knowing that there's nothing more that he can do. That very night he became enlightened. Transformation comes like death in its own time, and like death it takes you from one dimension into another. So, I mean, look at this face. Can you see right here? It's that Buddha, restful, peaceful state that is depicted right here. A mirroring energy. Except for this is more of a spiritual rebirth. And this is more of a earthly, you know, rebirth. Both new beginnings. Phoenix rising. And then we got this reflection here, mirroring. Even this too, you know, the rainbow tears and the colors touching his, um, his shirt here and the rainbow colored tears. It's not only melting the ice, but it's, um, you know, giving color to his landscape as well. And then we got this little rainbow angel that keeps fluttering around uh, from reading to reading, offering guidance. Um, but yeah, there's a sense that um, he's going through a major transformation from the dark to the light, finding his power and strength and major rebirth. Okay, so now I'm going to pull two cards from Call It Bear and Read for the overall messages regarding the Divine Feminine reading. Beginning with the Feminine movement 
masculine sacred pool. You are in a time of positive forward motion. This time is a time for positive momentum as you come out of a period of restriction. You're in a stage of new adventure and discovery. You may feel compelled to take a trip, change your hair, or move your home or business. Regardless, you can't remain where you are anymore. You feel compelled to go forward. No matter what your inqu inquiry, you will see your dreams take form and doors previously shut begin to open as if by magic. Movement is also a state of mind. The fog lifts and you know the actions you need to take. This isn't the time for fear. Let go and move forward. And 47. The world is a reflection of your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Embody the love you wish to see in the world. When you look into the mirror do you like what you see the sacred pool card asks that you focus on self-love and self-esteem we are all works in progress so detached self-examination made with rigorous honesty is called for now reflect by the sacred pool and be at peace with yourself can you see how far you've come and how magical your life is do you notice a spark of the divine shining through your eyes when you're conscious that you're the embodiment of spirit it becomes easier to respect yourself and act in good conscience then you'll reap the greatest rewards. Your unique service to the world is not only needed but celebrated. See the love within and know that if you cast it upon the waters, it will return to you tenfold. Be at peace for you are beautiful and loved. Act with surety and confidence and success shall be yours, whatever your inquiry. Reflective state. Self-evaluation. And a rebirth where here, you know, there's that positive movement forward, just generally, you know, there's this optimism and, you know, um, leap of faith towards the 3D. All right, so, yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Love you much. Um, if you'd like to order a reading, my email is in the description box below. All right, peace.